is from Santa Fe College, and we have Professor Marie Trebek. She is an Associate Professor of Business Administration and Analytics at Santa Fe College, where she has instructed a variety of business program courses since 2015. She holds a Master's of Science in Health Informatics from the University of Illinois at Chicago, and a Master's of Business Administration from Tiffin University. Prior to joining Santa Fe, Marie had over 15 years of industry experience, um, including the instruction for experienced hires of big four firms. So welcome and thank you, Marie. Hi, everybody. Can you see me okay? Hear me okay? Both. We got you. Excellent, excellent. I don't know if I can emulate the passion of <laughs> the last presenter, um, Dr. Damaris, but um, hi everyone. So thank you so much for having me today. Um, so I do instruct a variety of business administration courses here at Santa Fe College in, in Gainesville, Florida. And what I'll be sharing with you today is something called an attendance assessment. And I developed and implemented this after learning about and receiving really inspiration for how to help students persist um, through an AQ course last year particularly in the online and hybrid environment um, where students may find it difficult to mentally attend class. So especially during the pandemic um, where many students quite frankly are required to learn in an environment that maybe they wouldn't have selected given the choice. Um, so the first and, and foremost um, important reason why I chose this assessment and why I developed and implemented this assessment was to establish you know, a sense of belonging in the online and hy hybrid learning environment. So this sense of belonging, it's supported by this assignment as a grade motivator, but it also encourages the students to show up to class to successfully complete the assignment. Um, but the sense of belonging is also supported by kind of a set of follow-up actions, if you will. So after we attend class, the students take the assessment and they receive feedback on, on their submission, as well as encouragement on their work where needed. So what I do is I use a flipped classroom model, similar to what I would do if we were able to have the class on campus, where students listen to a recorded mini lecture and they read before class, and then class time is spent on utilizing videos, reviewing current news and articles, participating in chat sessions, using breakout rooms, using other hybrid options um, and online options to help engage the students during class. So to take this sense of belonging a step further, the, the assessments used to ensure students not only attend, but that they participate in the class, focusing on both their physical and their mental attendance. Um, so the assessments address the main learning outcome for the course, that, that the students are able to demonstrate and understand um, a, an understanding of and their ability to apply business communication skills. And the questions in the assessment focus on critical thinking for the students to demonstrate their ability to apply the concepts that we've covered in the class, um, given a, a various set of scenarios as opposed to um, you know, just definition type assessments. Um, so these assessments were first used in the fall of 2020 um, on online and hybrid courses after I completed the AQ course and after it became clear to me that classes were not, that were traditionally going to be on campus are now going to be held virtually. Um, the assessments that are now being used for their second time in the, in the spring of uh, 2021. If I could go to the next slide, that'd be great. So you see here the message is that attendance matters. So again, it's not physical attendance, just showing up, but it's also the mental attestment, uh, attendance. Um, so these attendance assessments, they relate to helping students persist on many levels. So as many are aware, blended and hybrid learning environments can make students feel isolated and very disconnected from each other and from their instructors. And by connecting this physical and mental participation in class to these assessments, students gradually demonstrate a sense of belonging in the class and they start to participate more freely as time goes on. And they turn, um, they turn on their cameras more. And on occasion, they even exhibit self-managing of their over-participation. Uh, these assessments also allow students to take as much time with the material as required within a realistic time frame. 
um, given in, in the week or when the material within the module is, com is completed and we're moving on to the next module. Uh, the lack of time limitation on the assessment encourages students to reflect on what did we cover in class, it encourages students to revisit the recorded mini lectures, it encourages the students to review the text material, it encourages the student to contact the instructor for additional clarification, and it also encourages the students to research topics if needed. However, questions that can't be researched are also included. For example, discussions specific to that particular class or articles discussed specifically in class or videos that we've reviewed. So there's a balance between what can be looked into further and what must be understood during class. So again, and encouraging that mental participation and for them to continue to persist in their, their studies during class. So the assessments encourage increased effort to improve performance by providing two attempts with the highest score recorded. And this allows the student the opportunity to be um, kind of learn from the mistakes from the first attempt. And it also encourages them to take steps to improve their final submitted work. Students uh, experience the progression between these assessments and larger, higher stake assessments as well. So through detailed feedback from the instructor, students apply the lessons learned in the assessments to quizzes and ultimately the midterm and final exam. So as, as far as a growth mindset is concerned, by completing these assessments, students see that their effort helps to solidify and demonstrate their understanding of the concepts covered and winning Putting forth an effort on these assessments, the students see that their effort leads to a better understanding of the concepts, a better understanding of the course objectives and learning outcomes, a stronger foundation for industry application. We, we talk about how does this apply to industry? I I'll often bring in um, examples from my industry experience with these assessments. And then also, as well as increase what they're ultimately worried about and concerned with is results on quizzes, midterm, and final exam. So on the next slide, we'll see an example of words of encouragement that I've provided um, as an example. So the, the attendance assessments, they're similar to many check-in sessions where detailed comments and words of encouragement, similar to what you see illustrated on the example here, they're provided to support the student's learning and to assist in the student understanding the concept miss. And many of the concepts are reviewed again in a different format on the quiz and midterm and final. Although the attendance assessments are weighed relatively low compared to quizzes and exams, they're weighed high enough to encourage the student to participate in the class and to help students to contribute and continue to persist in their learning. So in this first example on the left, the student was asked a question that required an essay answer. And the student received partial credit for answering the question using a, a correct key words that we used in class in their answer. But this, the student received detailed feedback on how the question was answered in the assessment with specific examples and tend to encourage the student to think a little bit further about the details discussed in class and the meaning behind the key words that were submitted. In the second example on the right, the student was also asked a question that required an essay answer. And the student didn't receive credit for the answer. However, the student did receive positive feedback. As the example, it really truly was an excellent example of another concept that we covered in the class that day. So with the feedback, the student is encouraged by uh, helping him or her understand further why the question was missed. Um, why it was marked incorrect, but also supports their effort to continue to persist in understanding the actual concept that was actually supposed to be discussed in, in the, the question. So on the next slide, you can see um, the modality that I cover. So these assessments are used in online and hybrid learning environments. Um, I'm not teaching on campus at the moment, so that's where I'm using them. However, I am considering if this should be only given in the, the, the hybrid learning environment. So at the end of the se semester, a question in the course survey asked if they felt the attendance assessments were successful in connecting them with the course content as well as each other and their instructor. And the first su survey in the fall of 2020 indicated the assessments did help students connect with their instructor and persist in their studies. 
Since only one survey was conducted, I'm planning on a second survey to conduct that in the spring of 2021 to, to make sure that this should be both in the online and the hybrid learning environments. On the next slide, um, so these assessments are used in a variety of required courses for both the Associate of Science and the Bachelor's of Science core business classes. And the students that are in the required courses include traditional, non-traditional, as well as a significant number of dual enrollment students. Interestingly enough, the dual enrollment students and the traditional students seem to take more time with the attendance assessments than the non-traditional students. So I, I see students taking anywhere from five minutes to an hour on these assessments with the average being about 15 or 20 minutes. But I can see that those dual enrollment students and the non-traditional or the traditional students take more time on these. So an additional question at, in the end of course survey might reveal why this might be the case and I'll implement that. Um, but it's also interesting to see that the dual enrollment students have also scored relatively high on these assessments, which is uh, something interesting to me because some of the non-traditional students might have more experience with the content that we cover in the class. So I'm not sure exactly why that is. The students that have experienced this assignment have ranged from very prepared to very unprepared. Uh, for the student that's unprepared, this assignment is likely to be more welcome as points can be earned on the assignment in a relatively relaxed environment with the elimination of a time requirement and also an additional attempt permitted. Okay, so on the next slide. So on the syllabus, elements of the class are explain, explained and, and highlighted. And this is just an example or an illustration of how the attendance assessment is summarized on the course syllabus. And in the first day of class, the importance of physical and mental attendance is discussed with the students. And it's stressed that the class is not recorded. So they can see a connection between mental attendance and these assessments. So recognizing the fact that students are very interested in grades, we start to talk more and more about the connection between class participation and especially in this hybrid learning environment. And the assessments, uh, it's intended to provide as a motivator for students to really mentally tune into the class and participate. And we also discuss that there's an opportunity, which I know this hits home with the students, it's an opportunity for all students to receive high marks on 5% of their grade. So you don't just show up, you're marked attended in the beginning, middle and end of class and you freely get the 5%, you have to earn it. But it's a, a, it's a, a real achievable opportunity for all students to receive high marks on 5% of their grade. Um, so en encourage engagement again, encouraging uh, you know, persistence and uh, in their studies. So just importantly, however, we discussed the fact that these are um, there are small opportunities to demonstrate critical thinking on topics before the larger assignments that have greater impact on their measured outcomes are, are introduced in the class. On the next slide, um, thank you very much. So we see a snapshot here of part of an assessment that was built in the online and hybrid learning management system. We happen to use Canvas here in, at Santa Fe. And the assessments are provided there each week after class is completed. And I adjust them each week. So the core might maybe five or six questions might stay the same, but each class is a little bit different. So I'll update those right after class. So I'll publish it right after class. Um, and the assessments are available for one week until the next week's topics are covered or the next week's module is open. The assessments include 10 questions and they're in the format of multiple choice, essay, fill in the blank, true, false, matching. And they're not timed again. And the students are permitted to use resources. Again, the resources can include the recorded mini lectures, links provided during class if they wrote this information down. I don't provide it within the assessments. Um, the, I use ebooks so they can use their ebook research and other sources. Again, the, the focus is on several questions that cannot be researched, um, what our discussion actually um, in, entailed. And then students can take these assessments twice with their highest score recorded for their grade. And they do accumulate to 5% of their grade. Um, so achieving this mental attendance, it's, it's challenging and it's critical in all classes but it's especially difficult to achieve this 
mental attendance in the hybrid learning environment. So in, to ensure these students are truly in attendance, um, this participation in mental, mental attendance is, is stressed. So it, to ensure also a high level of critical thinking and application of the content is discussed in class, um, the assessments include a balance of question types, but they focus mostly on the critical thinking skills as opposed to just memorizing terms and definitions, taking notes and, and, and putting in key terms. Um, and they do create a basis or a foundation for the larger assignments in the course, including a common assignment that's common to all um, instructors that teach this course, as well as a course project, and again, the, the midterm and final exams. Um, and then the, finally, there is encouragement for improvement and progression. Individual feedback on every assessment is provided. Yes, it is time consuming for the instructor, but it does help the student persist. And then I'm providing an example of of the feedback on the next slide that I provide to students. And you can see that um, at times students complete parts of the assessment. And what I've seen is that when I have multiple choice matching and true and false, if they're running out of time, they'll finish those seven questions and maybe leave the, the essay or fill in the blank blank. Well, I don't just miss those questions and say, okay, I'm sorry, you've got a seven out of 10. You did really well on the part you finished. I, I do provide specific feedback. And so the feedback you can see, it, uh, an example provided here, encouraging them to persist in their studies. So in this instance, um, we looked at a TED Talk. Um, and so I've provided a link to that TED Talk that we talked about and we covered in class. It was a seven minute um, clip on uh, global, global markets. Um, so I provided this feedback to the student, encouraged the student to go ahead and revisit this TED Talk because those concepts are gonna be covered again. Um, in addition, one of the questions that was answered incompletely is addressed. So to include an explanation of the elements that were missed um, in the essay question. On the next slide, please. Thank you. So at the end of the course, there are two anonymous course surveys that are provided to students. One of those course surveys is developed by me, the instructor. And the goal of these the survey is to understand what's difficult for the students, what's working well, and what may require improvement. And the survey is typically around 10 questions. So I provide this survey at the end of the course, and I also provide around week seven before midterm, a survey um, not in Canvas, but using uh, forms just to see how, how are things coming along. And it addresses something very similar to this. And you can see question six here. It's one of the 10 survey questions asked of the student, and it focuses on their perspective of these attendance assessments. Um, in a minute, we'll look at the next slide and the, the results of these surveys. But what was learned from the first semester in the fall of 2020 when these assessments were used is that the focus was limited to mini check-in sessions as um, to keep the students on track. And this second semester, the spring of 2021, um, this focus expanded because of the results of the survey. Um, to not just make sure that students were keeping on track or on track with what we're learning, but to also demonstrate, again, that main learning outcome that I wanted to achieve in the class, which is to apply business communication skills. So I did make some adjustments there. So on the next slide, thank you very much. <clears throat> you could see a sample of the anonymous course survey results from the first time that the assessments were used. And overall, the assessments did appear to positively um, be received by students. And the majority of students um, do participate in the hybrid class, much to my um, relief, to be honest with you. I was a little bit anxious about the hybrid classes myself. So in fact, um, I even saw a shift in participation. And I don't know if it's because of these assessments and the grade, but I definitely saw a shift in per participation as the course progresses. Um, and I also saw that students were starting to move away from taking advantage of two attempts and using one attempt to complete the assessments. So my hope is that students saw the benefit of mental attendance and efficiency use of their time and avoiding the need to spend unnecessary time outside of class um, and use their time wisely while in class. Again, one adjustment was made to the questions to focus more on the student's understanding of concepts along with this learning outcome of applying business communication skills. Um, finally, my advice, which I have not implemented yet, is to use 
one or two trials before these assessments are used for a grade. Um, what I'm considering doing in the summertime is use these assessments for one or two weeks for a practice grade to get the students familiar with the process and what the expectations are, and then um, and then then implement them maybe in week three. And the reason I'm doing uh, considering doing that is because students do appear to improve on these assessments as the course progresses. Um, so. That wraps up the summary of the attendance assess assessments and how they were implemented in the online and hybrid learning environments to um, help my students persist in their learning. Thank you very much.